I get tons of questions about HRV, and if you've never heard of HRV, you're not alone. So a higher HRV indicates a well-functioning, adaptable, autonomic nervous system. So heart rate variability, or HRV, is the variation in time intervals between heartbeats. If you have 60 beats a minute, that doesn't mean that your heart beats once every second. It means that it's beat 60 times in a minute, but the variation between those beats could be anywhere from. Hey guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Human Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Brecka, human biologist, and today we're exploring a fascinating, highly impactful topic, heart rate variability. I get tons of questions about HRV, and if you've never heard of HRV, you're not alone. But by the end of this episode, you'll understand why it's an essential metric for optimizing your health and your performance. So heart rate variability, or HRV, is the variation in time intervals between heartbeats. Remember, if you have 60 beats a minute, that doesn't mean that your heart beats once every second. It means that it's beat 60 times in a minute, but the variation between those beats could be anywhere from a partial second to more than a second to two seconds. So this, unlike your heart rate, which measures the number of beats per minute, HRV looks at the precise intervals between each beat. So a higher HRV indicates a well-functioning, adaptable, autonomic nervous system, while a low HRV can be a sign of stress, fatigue, or other health issues. So HRV is a powerful indicator of your body's autonomic nervous system, which controls involuntary functions like heart rate, digestion, and your respiratory rate. It reflects how well your body can adapt to stress and maintain balance. Studies have shown that HRV is linked to various health outcomes, including cardiovascular health, stress resilience, and your overall well-being. The autonomic nervous system has two main branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic system prepares your body for fight or flight responses, high stress situations, while the parasympathetic system promotes rest and digest activities. HRV measures the balance between these two systems and it provides insights into your body's stress response and your recovery ability. So research published in the journal Frontiers in Neuroscience highlights that HRV is a non-invasive biomarker of autonomic nervous system function, and it's linked to mental and physical health. So higher HRV is generally associated with better cardiovascular health, improved emotional regulation, and greater resilience to stress. So several factors can influence your HRV, including your age, we know that HRV tends to decrease with age. Your fitness level, so regular physical activity can actually improve your HRV, and this is measurable. I measure my HRV on a whoop, but there's aura rings and all other types of monitors that you can wear, and you can get a baseline of your HRV, and you can see whether or not activities you're engaging in are improving or causing your HRV to go down. So stress and chronic stress can definitely lower your HRV. Sleep quality is another major impact on heart rate variability. So the better you're sleeping, generally the higher your heart rate variability. Opt for a really good sleep routine. Hydration and nutrition are key indicators for HRV and dehydration and poor nutrition have a major negative impact on heart rate variability. Alcohol and substance abuse are definitely no-fly zones for improving your HRV. These have a negative and adverse effect on heart rate variability. Chronic illnesses, conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and chronic pain also lower our HRV. So HRV can be measured using various devices from professional medical equipment to consumer grade wearables like Whoop and the Apple Watch and even your Aura Rings. These devices typically use ECG or PPG sensors to track heartbeats and calculate your HRV. It's essential to measure HRV under consistent conditions. Your baseline will be different from somebody else's baseline. So that the same time of day, you get an accurate, meaningful data that allows you to form a baseline and see whether or not your heart rate variability is improving or going down based on the activities you're engaging in. So when you're analyzing your HRV, it's crucial to understand the context of your readings. So for instance, a sudden drop in HRV after an intense workout is normal as your body needs time to recover. However, consistently low HRV over time might indicate chronic stress or overtraining. HRV is not just a number. It has practical implications in various fields. 
Number one, in sports and fitness, athletes use HRV to monitor recovery and optimize training. It gives them a, a sense of how ready they are to re-stress their body. A high HRV indicates readiness for intense workouts, while a low HRV suggests the need for more rest and more recovery. Mental health. Therapists and psychologists use HRV and biofeedback on patients to help them manage stress, anxiety, and even depression. Techniques like deep breathing, mindfulness, these increase our heart rate variability and they improve our mental and emotional state. Chronic disease management is also important. Doctors monitor HRV in patients with conditions like heart disease and diabetes to gauge autonomic function and tailor treatment plans for them. Even workplace wellness has an impact. HRV monitoring can be as part of a corporate wellness program to help employees manage stress and improve their overall health. So let's dive a little deeper into how HRV relates to stress. When you're stressed, your sympathetic nervous system dominates. Your fight or flight nervous system and your fight or flight response takes center stage. This decreases HRV as your body prepares to face a perceived threat. So over time, chronic stress leads to consistently low HRV, which is associated with various health issues, including heart disease, hypertension, and mental health disorders like anxiety and depression. So understanding your HRV can help you manage stress more effectively. So for example, noticing a drop in HRV can be a signal to take a step back, engage in more relaxation techniques, and prioritize self-care, whereas a high HRV lets you know you're ready to be challenged. So actionable steps to improve your HRV. Let's talk more about how to improve your HRV and consequently your overall health and performance. So here's some actionable steps. Number one and most important, engage in regular physical activity, particularly aerobic exercise like walking, running, cycling, or swimming, or just getting out for a brisk walk after a meal can enhance your HRV. Aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week and watch your baseline HRV improve. Quality sleep is an absolute must. Prioritize sleep by maintaining consistent sleep schedules. Create a restful environment. Avoid caffeine or electronics before bed. Aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep and follow my five tips for sleep management, which is darken the room, cool the room off, unplug your electronics six feet from your head, and practice breathing exercises when you get in bed and limit to reduce screen time to zero. Practice stress-reducing techniques such as mindfulness, meditation, deep breathing exercises, or yoga. These practices, even simple things like a contrast shower before going to bed, have a dramatic impact on your restful state and your parasympathetic nervous system, which boosts your HRV. Balanced nutrition. Eat a diet rich in whole foods. Lean proteins, healthy fats, plenty of fruits and vegetables. Staying hydrated is also crucial for maintaining good HRV. As we get more dehydrated, our HRV has a tendency to drop. Mindful breathing also is a great way to incorporate breath techniques and exercises into your daily routine. Techniques like diaphragmatic breathing, one of my favorite, which is the Wim Hof style of breathing deeply, sometimes breathing out through a straw, can stimulate the vagus nerve and improve your heart rate variability. Consistency in your routine is crucial. So try to maintain a regular daily routine, including consistent meal times, exercise times, and consistent sleep schedules. This can help regulate your autonomic nervous system. Avoid any excessive alcohol or substance use. Limiting alcohol as close to zero as possible and obviously avoiding drugs was gonna prevent negative impacts on your HRV. But most of all, guys, limit your alcohol intake to as close to zero as possible. Also, cold exposure. Cold showers and ice baths do stimulate the vagus nerve and they have been shown to improve HRV. Start with short exposures and gradually increase the duration as your body adapts. A cold shower can be as little as 30 seconds of cold water exposure. Biofeedback training. These biofeedback training devices help you train your HRV by providing real-time feedback on your physiological state. This can be particularly useful for learning how to control stress responses and improve autonomic balance. Even social connections. Engaging in meaningful social interactions does boost HRV by enhancing emotional well-being and reducing stress. So by now, you should have a good understanding of HRV and why it matters. 
Monitoring so you can improve your HRV will lead to significant benefits in your overall health, stress resilience, and your physical performance. Remember, small, consistent changes in your lifestyle make a big difference. Thank you for joining me today on the Ultimate Human Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your friends. And until next time, remember, it's just science.